Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to the London Club and this video in which I'm going to put a £340, a little bit more in terms of dollars, package set through its paces. This is the Wilson X31 and if you are a beginner golfer or you're um, somebody who's returning to the game having taken a bit of a break from it and you want to kick yourself out from a standing start, then this is the sort of thing that you might want to consider. And I think the first question to answer is what do you get for your money? Well, you get 10 clubs in total. So driver, fairway wood, hybrid, six iron, down to sand wedge, putter, plus you get the golf bag as well, which when you consider the price tag feels like very good value for money. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this package set through its paces in a couple of tests out here on the golf course at the London Club. Plus I'm gonna talk through some of the other things that you can expect from this set if you are interested. Uh, right, let's get out on the golf course and see how we get on. Okay, so the truth is I have already tested this package set. So I've got a pretty good idea about what I think about the performance. I've already written about them as well on the Golf Monthly website. I'll put in a link to the review below. And I'm gonna start with what I think is the real highlight of this set, which is the X31 irons, which I think look really good. So down behind the ball, I think they've got a really nice shape to them. So there's a, a thickish top line without the top line being too thick. And I think that's a really nice balance for people who are sort of getting into golf, maybe don't know exactly what they're after. Having something that just looks pretty simple down behind the ball is I think a really good idea. And I think Wilson have got that spot on here. In terms of the blade length, so the distance from kind of heel to toe, I'd say this is perhaps a fraction on the compact side. I think it looks lovely down behind the ball, but there might be some players out there for whom these look a little bit intimidating. But as I say, I thought the irons uh, were very good and I thought the performance of the irons was very good. So I'm gonna test that now. So uh, we've got about 170 yards into the 12th hole here on the international course at the London Club, all over water. And I'm gonna hit three shots with the X31 and three shots with my own Mizuno JPX 919 forged irons, and we're gonna see how we get on. Each of the golf balls with the X31 has an X on it. And I'm gonna hit one with the Wilson, then one with the Mizuno, one with the Wilson, go through it like that. So I'm gonna start with the Wilson X31 six iron. I'm quite pleased with that. This is quite a tough challenge, actually. I wouldn't be surprised if I hit a couple in the water during this. So I'm gonna to swap to my own six iron. Okay, so last one, then we'll go and have a look, see how we got on. Okay, not a single one in the water. Let's see how we got on. Okay, so up on the green, and I think the key finding is that I hit my own Mizuno JPX 919 6-iron, probably about a club further on the hole. There's one of each over there. There's one golf ball with an X on it and one without. Uh, the one without was the last shot I hit with the Mizuno, which I hit slightly out of the bottom. Didn't catch it, uh, so it did really well in terms of performance. That's also a Wilson golf ball, and there's one a little bit longer, just over the brow of the, the hill there. The two other Mizuno shots I hit, one is there, probably the closest to the flag of all of them, and then there's one on the hill over there, so a little bit further. So it goes to show that for me, I hit the ball a little bit further with my own set of irons, but it, it is a bit of an unfair comparison because I was custom fitted for my own Mizuno set of irons. They are a premium set as well, so they're much more expensive. I think the point here is that I wasn't expecting to get as much performance from that Wilson set of irons as I got. I think the consistency is the key. So one, two, and then three just over there, all pretty much in a line, the same sort of distance all the way through. So good ball flight, Good enough distance, I think I would just have to reevaluate how far I hit the ball. And the performance on the whole, the ball flight, uh, the kind of consistency that I was getting from the Wilson was very good. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at the driver. And here it is, here's the head cover. Um, head cover, I'm um, not great. 
uh, I think I'd probably want to upgrade that. But underneath, here is what it looks like. Very simple. I think it looks quite smart, but, but doesn't sort of scream, definitely doesn't scream kind of high tech to you. It's got a gray, the crown has a kind of gray finish with an orange alignment marking. It's quite square in the toe area. What I do like about this driver is that they've highlighted the face really nicely. So it's got a very bright silver face to it, which contrasts the gray crown and that highlights the loft on offer. So if you're somebody that's a beginner or a higher handicapper, I think looking down on that little bit more loft is possibly a bit more confidence inspiring from a driver. It's not all singing, all dancing. It doesn't have a kind of wow factor to it, but I think it's all right, the look of the driver. Now I'm gonna hit three shots with this up against three shots with another Wilson driver. This is the Wilson uh, launch pad that was uh, launched for 2022. It's a nine degree uh, head and it's a draw bias driver. It's, this isn't necessarily the driver for me and my game, but it's quite a nice comparison because this comes in at just over 300 pounds. So not a million miles away from the cost of the entire X31 set. So it'd be interesting to see what the differences are in terms of performance. There is quite a big difference in terms of look. I really like the way the Wilson launch pad looks. The fact that it's, it's offset is gonna help people who suffer with um, a bit of a slice. And the shaft you'll notice is a little longer in the Wilson uh, launch pad. So would expect a bit more clubhead speed and a bit more distance as a result of that. But let's find out. I've got the Garmin Approach R10 on the floor behind me and it's showing data on the screen in front of me. Let's see how we get on. So I'm gonna start with the Wilson X31. So the shaft just says men's flex on it, which I don't really know what that means, but it feels fairly, um, fairly flexible in my hand. So probably not right for me, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I've hit that pretty well. Right hand side, it's nicely downwind, so it's quite an uh, appealing tee shot to hit. That's carried two, five, three, and gone a total of two, six, nine. Let's hit a couple more. Okay, I've really killed that. That's perfect drive. Carried that bunker, which is, this is a par five. If I can carry that bunker, I can get to the green in two. I've hit that pretty well. Interestingly, it's come up with pretty much exactly the same yardage, I think, as the first shot. So it's carried 251, slightly lower ball flight, and it's gone 269. So not bad distance for me. I mean, that's not as far as I would usually expect to hit the ball, but shaft's not as long. It's not a premium driver. So not bad. And I think the other thing that I quite like about this driver, I don't love it, but I quite like the way it feels. It doesn't feel too high pitched and too kind of tinny. It feels, it's got some power behind it, the way that it feels through the ball. I, I quite like that. I'll push that. But again, I've hit that well. That would probably be the longest. <laughs> Interesting note. That's gone carried 251, exactly the same as the last one, but gone a total of 270. I pushed it, so it's slightly right. But all three of those drives, I say the consistency is pretty good, pretty good ball flight, and not bad in terms of distance. So, question is, how does it compare to the launch pad, which has a more of a premium shaft in it, it's got an even flow shaft in it. It's, um, it's definitely set up for those people who struggle with a bit of a slice, which actually might suit me on this hole, given that I've, I've hit two down the right hand side, so we'll see. <laughs> so I really love the way this driver looks down behind the ball. It looks sleek, it looks modern, it looks cool. Not a massive fan of the way it sounds. It's very high pitched, really big high draw on that, which I think is the sort of thing a lot of golfers will like. That's carried 266 and got a total of 282. And the ball, difference in ball flight between the shots with the X31 and that significant. That's gone so much higher. That's a bit more out the bottom. Got a bit lower, but I've hit it pretty well. Well, that's carried two, four, seven, gone a total of two, six, one. I say I hit it out the bottom, so it hasn't carried quite as far. But it's gone two, six, one. So, you know, for a fairly poor strike, I think I'll take that. It's gone straight as well, which is good. Right, one more. Very loud through the ball, very loud. Sort of thing that if you're a slower swinger and you want that high pitched, loud impact sound. It will help you feel like it's powerful. For me, I prefer slightly more duller pitched drivers. That went high. It's gone pretty much straight down the middle. Carried 253 and gone a total of 260. I think if I was playing a full round with these two drivers, I'd see consistently that I was longer and probably straighter actually with the, the launch pad. But I think given the cost of the 
X31 set of golf clubs. I think that this driver sort of does a pretty good job. And I guess over time, as you, you get into it, as you start to play a bit more, then that's an area of the bag that you might want to upgrade in time. So I think in terms of the basic straight out of the bag performance, the X31 driver, not too bad. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is the bag, which I think is actually a really important element to any package set. And this one, I have to say, is pretty good. So Wilson have a seven-way divider in the top, so you can order your golf clubs nicely, you can keep them all nicely spaced out from each other. It's a stand bag, as you see, so it's probably more applicable for people who want to carry, but importantly, it has these two straps here at the bottom, Velcro straps, that means that they will hold the stand in if you want to put it on a trolley or you want to put it on a buggy, it has a really good sized full length pocket here for any waterproofs that you might want to carry. A valuables pocket here, although that doesn't have any kind of protective lining to it. Uh, a good sized ball pocket here and then another pocket on the side at the back. It's a pretty simple bag. It's not been over designed, over complicated. It's maybe not the sturdiest bag I've ever used. The straps do a pretty good job, but there's not a massive amount of cushioning with these straps. So again, you're going to find more from a more expensive bag, but for the money of the set as a whole, I think you get pretty good um, value for money from the bag itself. So it's pretty simple. It's lightweight, and I think as you can use it, either as a carry bag or on a trolley or on a buggy, uh, that seems to make sense too. Okay, so I'm gonna finish by touching on the putter, which as you can see, has a classic sort of heel and toe shape to it, very traditional to look down on behind the ball, quite generous from heel to toe, so not too small. I think they've done a pretty good job of this. It, it, it looks smart, it's got a two-tone finish to it, so sort of a, a gray part to the back of the head and then a black, a black head with three simple alignment lines on it to help you if you want a bit of help with alignment that's going in <laughs> now in terms of the feel I, I wasn't expecting too much i think from a for a putter that comes from a an entire set that costs 350 pounds i'm not expecting a huge amount in terms of feel and it is fairly hot off the face but it's not too bad um, there would be a couple of small gripes i've got with this putter one would be that it doesn't come with a head cover and i've now played probably a couple of rounds of golf with this set and you can start to see a few bash marks in the head so I definitely would recommend getting a head cover for it if you are buying this set and then the other thing is the grip the grip's fine the grip is fine but if you wanted a maybe a softer feel you could potentially think about replacing the grip with something more of a kind of typical putter grip that you'll find on the market that will just provide you with that slightly softer uh, sensation in your hands as you can see that I've hold two, two pretty good putts here and um, so I'd say it's in keeping with the rest of the set in that it's simple it's classic it's no frills they've not gone and done anything that's going to put too many people off which I think is a pretty good idea Okay, so there you have it. That's my look at the Wilson X31 package set. And all in all, I think this is a pretty good investment. And the reason I think that is because the irons are so good. The other clubs in the set will do a job, but the irons I think are really good. And I think they will um, serve you pretty well over a period of time. Now, any beginner or any golfer who look, who's looking to kit themselves out from a standing start is likely to want to make upgrades and changes as they get better as they get more into golf over time. This set offers you the foundations from which you can work because obviously the, the irons form the lion's share of the set. Um, and I think it's got a pretty good bag as well. So there you have it, that's the Wilson package set. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.